Dakota a one to nothing lead. Later in the period, the Sioux on the power play. Scott Kovarinsky will get the rebound and put it up and over John Hyduke, who appeared to have the side covered, but it was two to nothing North Dakota. Less than two minutes later, the Bulldogs on a power play of their own get a tally as Chris Miller fires the shot and Jerry Chimola tips it in to make it a 2-1 hockey game. But that was all the closer the Bulldogs could get as North Dakota would dominate the rest of the way here. Dane Jackson gets his first collegiate goal as the Sioux win it 4-1 and Coach Gasparini was pleased with his team's effort coming off a double loss to Minnesota. Well, it was a good feeling because uh, when you enter a game and you don't know how you're going to, you know, if you're going to carry the negatives of uh, your last outing into this series, it, it would have been tough for us. But I think our players showed a little resiliency and a little maturity in how they responded to, to uh, that kind of a challenge. And uh, they met the challenge very, very well because we probably came out of the shoot better than uh, any time this season. That's for certain. Saturday night, the Bulldogs turned the table on their hosts on the power play in the first period. Jerry Chimola comes up with the loose puck in the Dakota zone, spots Scott Keller on the doorstep. He jams at home. His second goal of the season gave UMD a 1-0 lead. Then with the team's three-on-three, -three, Greg Anderzak with a great individual effort follows up his own rebound and gives Minnesota Duluth a 2-0 lead. Goaltender Chad Erickson picked up his first win for the Bulldogs on Saturday night. Here he stops former teammate and War Road High School star Izzy Marvin on the breakaway. Moments later, the Bulldogs would cash in at the other end as Sandy Smith feeds Chris Lindbergh, who deflects it into the open net to give Duluth a 3-0 lead. Dakota tried to get back into it, and they cut it to a 4-2 hockey game when Neil Eisenhut beats Erickson. And the Bulldogs go on to win it by a score of 4-2 to two on Saturday night to gain a split of the weekend series. Since joining the WCHA in 1969, the Wisconsin Badgers have garnered the best winning percentage in regular season play, ending up victorious in almost 60% of their contests. This year started out bitter for Jeff Sauer and company, but that slow start has now become sweet for Sauer. It would be a rather long night for Damian Rhodes in the Michigan Tech net at the Dane County Coliseum. It was already 1-0 Badgers, but here Tech ties it. Watch number 22, Kelly Hurd, come around the net. He will tip in a shot from the point. It's a power play goal, and the game was tied at 1-1. But it was to be a different story the rest of the way. Big mistake by the Huskies' defense here, and Tom Sagasor takes advantage, making the interception. Deke shoots, scores, 2-1 Badgers. Later in the period, number seven, John Parker feeds out front. Watch number two, defenseman Greg Poss shoot and score. Stick side, 3-1 Badgers. But wait, there's more in the third period. The Badgers break out three on two. Puck comes to number 11, John Bice, and the oh-so-nice goal to make it 4-1 Badgers. And that's the way it ended, the Badgers taking game one of the series. On Saturday night, Wisconsin led 1-0 after one period. In the second, John Bice just exploded. Here he fires one. It trickles through Damian Rhodes, a power play tally to make it 2-0. Sean Harrison didn't have a bad second period either. Watch the puck bouncing around behind the Badger net. Harrison there to take advantage and cut the Badgers lead in half at 2-1. But John Bice was not to be denied. Wisconsin on another power play. Puck comes to Chris Tansel. He fires. Rhodes makes the stop, but Bice right on the doorstep to bang it home, 3-1 Badgers. So now it was Sean Harrison's turn for Tech. Kip Noble's drive is deflected right to Harrison, who goes upstairs for his second goal of the period. Wisconsin's lead was back to one at three to two. But before the period ended, we would hear from Mr. Bice one more time. Paul Stanton's drive is tipped out in front, and Bice says, hello, hat trick on the rebound. It was 4-2 Badgers after two. They kept it up in the third period. On the power play, Bice to Chris Tansel, who fans on the drive, but Doug McDonald is there to follow up and give Wisconsin its biggest cushion of the game, a 5-2 lead. The Badgers went on from there to win game 2-7-3 for a sweep of the series. When we come back, we'll explore the scores from out east, have highlights from the ECAC and Hockey East, and of course, this week's College Hockey USA Coaches Poll after this. Welcome back to College Hockey USA. In Hockey East last year, uh, Boston College and Boston University went through uh, a bit of a collective slump. Over the years, they've had an intense rivalry. Both teams coming into this year are looking to improve upon uh, what they went through in uh, the 87-88 season. That's right. It was not a good year, but things are looking up for both programs. Last year, they had subpar seasons that impressed 
very few. But with many lettermen returning, BC and BU both have chances at the Hockey East crown. All this optimism has brought about hockey fever in Beantown once again, and all that excitement came to an head when the Eagles and Terriers squared off this past Tuesday night. It was opening night at Boston College's brand new Silvio Conte Forum, and Boston College President Reverend J. Donald Monahan did the honors, dropping the ceremonial first puck. But Boston University was intent on spoiling the party. Watch Finnish import Billy Kentela get the shot off as he's going down, beating David Lippmann, giving the Terriers a 1-0 lead. But BC came back to start an avalanche of goals by both teams. Here Tim Sweeney finds Stephen Hines' pretty play, and the game was tied at 1. But BU's aggressive play put the Terriers back on top. As off the forecheck comes this loose puck to Billy Kentela. He beats David Lippmann, and it was 2-1 BU. After the Terriers went up 3-1, David Emma centers it, and off a scramble out front, Steve Shifley spins and scores on the backhander. That made it a 3-2 hockey game and complete at a string of four goals in just 145. In the second period, though, BU on the power play. Mike Lappin centers it. Dave Tomlinson is there to put it home, making it a 4-2 BU lead. They go on to win it 6-3 on Tuesday night, spoiling the Boston College party on opening night in the Eagles' new nest. Northeastern continued its winning ways against the Eagles of Boston College. People talk about the BCBU rivalry, but when BC plays Northeastern, the fans often fill Matthews Arena. The Northeastern fans packed Matthews Arena for this matchup, and the Huskies didn't let them down. But it was Boston College getting on the board first. The Eagles shorthanded here, but they get a two-on-one. Dave Emma finding Steve Scheifele for the score, and the Eagles take a 1-0 second period lead. Before the stanza was finished, Northeastern would even the score with good forechecking in the final seconds. Flanagan with a long drive connects, beating Sandy Galupo. It was tied at one after two. On to a wild third period. Huskies on the attack. Watch the lovely two-on-one here. Sweeney for Maine. Back to Sweeney. He scores. And Northeastern takes its first lead of the game at two to one. But BC wasn't about to pack it in. Here's Greg Brown with a wicked wrist shot through the five hole. And it was tied again at two. Now it was Northeastern's turn. Rico Rossi to Dave Buda to Harry Muse. And it's good news. Huskies lead it three to two. They never trailed. After that, with just over a minute to play, it's Buda with a fine individual effort, chugging up ice. He'll take it himself, cutting toward the net and scoring to give the Huskies a little breathing room. Northeastern remains undefeated, beating BC 4-2 the final. When Maine lost Mike McHugh and Mike Golden to graduation, it looked like they'd have some problems scoring. But that hasn't been the case so far this season. Mario Thayer was a highlight show by himself. First of all, he walks in, stick handles, and scores. Later, a rink-long dash ending with a blistering slap shot. Then, a penalty shot try. Yeah, you know, it's one of those nights when everything you're doing work well, you know. Every break you have, you everything work well. You put, you shoot once and the puck goes in, you know. It's just one of those nights. Well, I read in the hockey news he's not a Hobie Baker candidate. If he's not, I don't know who is. Because he is one great hockey player. Meanwhile, freshman Mike Barkley, who was just put on the fire line, scored twice and looked right at home. We're working hard, you know, and then that's the key to any line of success. And things are bound to happen. Those guys are working hard, and you know, I was trying to skate, too. Time and time again all night, Scott King came up big, stopping 28 shots. I came up with plays when, when my team needed them. I think that, that's, that's the key to goaltending, I think. And, and you know, it was just a team effort, and I was just part of that effort, I think. A 6-2 to two win, the Bears take their unbeaten record on the road until Thanksgiving night. With New Hampshire out of the way, Maine took off for Columbus, Ohio to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Friday night, Scott Pellerin had the hat trick and Maine went on to win it 6-4. to four. Saturday night, it was all Black Bears again as Pellerin and Martin Robitaille each tallied twice and Kristen Lalonde had a goal and four assists as Maine won it 10-2. to two. But the bad news for Sean Walsh is that Mario Thayer broke his leg in three places. He is lost for the season. Well, Paul, we've had some surprising results this week in college hockey, and I think that will cause some movement in our poll. Let's check it out. Number 10 this week. The St. Lawrence Saints. Number 9, Boston University. 8th, Michigan. 7th, the Fighting Sioux. 
Harvard hasn't played a game yet, but the Crimson with the sixth spot. Northeastern off to a quick start is in fifth place. The Bowling Green Falcons are fourth. Undefeated Maine is third with two first place votes. Two first place votes for the Minnesota Gophers, but they fall to second. And a new number one this week, Michigan State. Six first place votes, 94 total points. That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Catch us again next week, won't you? We'll see you at the rink, everyone.